So now let's uh, take a look no yung ating um, core net ay yung ating control plane and user plane sa 5G. So in any system like for example LTE and uh, 5G we call there is a there is a concept that what we call the SD SDN no? software defined network. So the main concept of the software defined networking is uh, you are separating the control plane to the user plane. So for the ease of architecture and implementation. So imagine we have the core network of 5G and then you have a G node B and then there is uh, communication happening between these two. There is a different traffic. So we have the user plane. The user plane is, um, this is where, um, this is the plane where the, it carries the network user traffic. So if you are downloading data, okay, you are downloading a huge file from the, from the from a certain server and it will go in uh, inside your 5G core and then before it goes to your user terminal it needs to it will use the user plane but before the network allows it to be downloaded there are control planes okay that carries the signaling traffic and like for example you are delivering something you order something from Lazada okay so when it enters the, the security guard in your subdivision, it will not allow immediately, right? So there are control mechanisms. So sa tanongin niya ng guard, nasaan ka pupunta? Ano yung address? Okay, what is the address? Wa, sino yung tatawagan mo dyan? Sino yung tag-deliveran mo? What is the name of the recipient? And then uh, most of the time, if the guard is suspicious about the authenticity of the delivery because there's a lot of... of uh, packages arriving in your house uh, they will call you no for authentication okay so that is also part of the control mechanism so once the mechanism is uh, complete satisfied that's the time that the guard security guard will allow the delivery of your uh, products same thing also when you are uh, uh, withdrawing money right from the bank especially if you're using um, a bank book right so before you enter the bank, so the security guard will ask you uh, probably what is your purpose of entering the bank. Okay, So if you either you will deposit or you will withdraw, then, then if you're allowed to enter the bank, you will proceed to the teller. And then the if you would like to withdraw some money, like for example, you would like to withdraw 10 pesos <laughs> from the bank. So the, the teller will not uh, immediately give you money, right? Uh, what she will do is just she will check the authenticity of your account, okay? Check the balance if you still have money, and then uh, if uh, the, the 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 withdrawal is uh, is um, valid, okay, or acceptable. So if all requirements are complete, that's the the purpose of the control plane, and the user plane. If the if the all the essentials or all the a thresholds have been met or parameters have, has been met or have been met, uh, that's the time that the user plane will open up and then the money will come out. Okay, so that's the same with the with our network. Okay, so that's how the control plane and the user plane are separated. Okay, so if you look at this, this is a deeper protocol stack, okay, that we are uh, um, looking at in the 5G protocol stack. So you have these, uh, like for example, the OSI layer stack, okay? So you have the application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, physical. If you map it in the 5G network stack, so you have the application of service, open transport protocol, upper network, lower network, and open wireless architecture. So this is the 5G network stack. And if you separate the user plane protocol and the control plane protocol, maalala nyo to, si SDAP, PDCP, RLC, MAC, and physical. So that's the importance of knowing those uh, protocol because we need to understand where are these protocols happening no, in the layer of the network. So you have the user protocol and then you have the control protocol. So uh, usually the, the physical MAC, RLC, and PDCP are same in the user protocol and the control plane protocol. And there is an added protocol, the SDAP, okay, in the 5G, okay, the service uh, data adaptation protocol, and the NAS for the UE, 
uh, that is connecting go directly to the core network once you establish your connection. Okay, so this is the 5G uh, protocol stack. So why we are studying this now? Because uh, when if if uh, when 5G uh, will be if 5G will be deployed and then we will be using the what we call the RU CU DU split. Okay, so what is this RU DU split uh, concept? So remember the the basic uh, uh, architecture of a 5G or 4G network. So you have the core network. Okay, you have the core network. You have the baseband unit and you have the radio unit. Okay, you still remember this? And the baseband unit is connected via backhole network and the BBU is connected uh, via front hole network to the RRU. Okay, under the 3GPP approach, uh, technical reference 38.801. So they introduce what we call the network split or the RU CUDU split. The BBU functionality, the baseband functionality, is now separated into two. We call it the CU and the DU, okay? So by splitting these functions across multiple units, so 5G networks can be deployed in more flexible and scalable manner. Remember the um, this one, the cloud optimized architecture, okay? So where we want to separate uh, some of the components of the 5G network. So para tayo merong Lego system dito. Um, so we are separating first, no? The, yung ating uh, baseband unit into um, uh, two, the centralized unit and the distributed unit. And the RU is still the same, no? So the radio unit, okay? So this is what we call the RU CDU splits. Now, after splitting, no, we are we are splitting uh, the physical component of the baseband unit. Now it's time for us to split also the protocols. Okay, so remember the protocol uh, previously. Um, this one. Remember that the in the BBU, RRC, PDCP, RLC, MAC, and physical are located in the BBU. And RF is in the RRU. Okay. Now, what, what will happen if the BBU will be separated into two or will be split into centralized unit and distributed unit? <clears throat> so what will happen if we separate the BBU to the CUDU, the protocol will also be distributed. Okay. So previously, this one is uh, in one BBU, right? So now we are introducing the functional split options for 5G. So in the CU, there's a possibility that in the CU, uh, you can see the RRC or the PDCP or the high RLC or the low RLC. It depends on how the vendor or the operator wants to have the split. Where do they want to do the split? Okay, so if it's option two, the PDCP and the RRC protocol will be located in the CU. And the high RLC, low, high MAC, uh, low MAC, and the high physical will be on the DU. Okay. So you can see also the layer one functions, the layer two functions, and the layer three functions here. And if you look at uh, some, detailed in the di some details in the diagram, which is like this. So the BB. You previously is this one, okay? Now separated into two, centralized unit and a distributed unit. And the centralized unit is divided into um, um, control plane, control plane, and the user plane. And then the DU is now uh, equipped with the RLZ, the MAC, and the high physical. Okay, so this is how the aggregation, this aggregation, meaning we are splitting the component, the hardware component, and also the protocols inside the, the components. So why is it important? Why do we need to separate this one? Remember, we have a different use cases in 5G. What are those? EMBB, URLLC, MMTC. This applications or use cases require different 
architecture structure. Okay, especially for like for example in the URLC where there is a need for a low latency communication, meaning kinakailangan natin mabilis na response ng network. So how do we do that? If your core network, like if your baseband or the cell site or the baseband unit is located 10 kilometers from you, no, even even the sabi natin the speed of light, there's still a delay. No, that's uh, uh that is noticeable. So in order uh, for us to do that, we need to move some part of the network near to the users to increase or to reduce further the latency. Okay. So that's why we are disaggregating the network. No, so we have a different uh, use case, uh, different uh, use cases and applications needed. So in this case, if we separate this uh, uh, a component, there will be another uh, interface. No, so previously uh, the connection between the RU and the DU we call it the front hole. And the CU and the, uh, the baseband and the core network, we call it the back hole. Now, since the baseband is separated into two, we have DU, distributed unit, and the centralized unit, we call it the mid hole. Okay, mid hole. So this is the connection between the DU and the CU. And you can see here, these are the latency requirements for each um, interconnection, the maximum latency and the maximum distance you know, that uh, can be covered. You can see that the, the CU and the DU can be located at the 20 to 40 kilometers apart, while the DU and the RU can be from 1 to 20 kilometers. So it's possible that your distributed unit is located in one building and your remote unit can be located on the other building. So that's possible no? as long as you satisfy this coverage requirement and latency requirement based on your applications. Okay. So, um, um, so why do we need to have a split? No? So these are the three factors for a run splitting. So there is a need to support specific quality of service for offered services. Just like I mentioned, your low latency. Uh, for URLLC, high throughput for EMBB, and real and non-real-time applications. There's also a specific uh, need for specific user density and low demand per given geographical area. There are areas that a lot of users, and there are areas that are very um, a few users. No? So there is a specific uh, support needed on this uh, type of applications. And uh, available transport networks with different performance level. So transmission network is expensive. No? So we need to optimize how we will use our transport network to uh, further uh, address some applications. So this is some a typical example from parallel wireless. So you can see the different splits. No? Um, for open run, uh, the split that is recommended is the split seven. Okay, the split seven. And for applications like 2G and 3G, if you will do the splitting, it's uh, recommended to have the split eight. The split eight. So the split eight is a simplified, the uh, most simple, uh, uh, the simplest no? um, split that we can implement for 2G and 3G because the the services for 2G and 3G are not so complicated like the services in 4G and 5G where we can um, embed the circuits in the radio part. Okay, So if the functionalities are simple only, you can have simple circuit or microchips inside this RRU, okay, RF. So that's why in the 4G and 5G split 7, is one of the recommended uh, split type. Okay. All right. So that's our uh, 5G uh, discussion for for today. So it's a combination of of uh, simple concept going to some uh, deeper concept on 5G. 